Hello folks, welcome to my strawberry blouse tutorial. I named this blouse the strawberry blouse because I think it looks like a strawberry and it truly embodies everything wonderful about summer, no? And I am unabashedly pleased that I made one using a men's shirt because I didn't think it was possible at first. If you want to make it too, I've linked the pattern below. Otherwise you can slow down the footage that I am talking over and make the pattern yourself. I'm going to be making my block patterns available in a range of sizes on my Etsy site so that you can follow along with my pattern tutorials. Finally, before we get into this, I want to say that I love to see your creations. So please tag me at Lydia Naomi Soul if you follow on, along with any of my tutorials or hashtag Lydia Naomi and I would love to look at and share some of them. Oh, and also stay tuned to the end where you will see me embarrass myself by wrapping the outro to this vid. You do not want to miss it, okay? My first pattern ended up looking like this, and looking at it now, I almost liked it better than the gingham one, which is the second draft. But I wanted to add length and more puff to the sleeves, so this second pattern, the gingham blouse, turned out like this. I found that the side flare I added and the exuberant spreading of the sleeves made it just a little too generous and floppy. Even though I really like this blouse, probably my favorite out of all three. So the final pattern is the best of both worlds. I will be showing you the difference between the men's shirt blouse and the from scratch blouse with the pattern. If you download my pattern, you want to print it unscaled or at the scale of 100%. Make sure your printer paper feeder is snug so that the printing doesn't skew at all. Once printed, measure the boxes on page 1 to make sure that it was printed in the proper scale. My print patterns are designed to go to the very edge of the page, but if you don't have borderless printing like me, that is okay. Simply match up the paper at the very edge. No cutting or guessing necessary. If you are making this from scratch, you will need about a yard and a half of 59 inch wide fabric or about two yards of 44 inch wide fabric. I made mine from a cream colored cotton. Once cut, you will want to prep everything by ironing folds in the appropriate places, the sleeve hem binding, the waist ties, the facing ties, and the casing areas on the front and back bodice. You are going to iron according to the widths established on the pattern. This will really streamline your sewing process, believe me. You will also want to serge the sleeve and body on the side seam and armhole seams and nowhere else because all of those seams will be hidden with facings and a rolled hem. If you are upcycling a men's shirt, you want to size large or up. This is a large Ralph Lauren cotton seersucker gingham shirt. I laid out the shirt and placed the pattern pieces in different places to see how best it will fit. Then I cut open the shirt from the side seam to cuff, removed the cuffs and collar and all the buttons. I pinned the back piece to the double front. I pinned the raglan sleeve pattern to the doubled sleeve with the top of the pattern near the cuff and made sure the back of the sleeve pattern is over the cuff placket. And just remember the back of the sleeve is indicated by the double notch. The front bodice is on a fold so I fold the back of the shirt and line it up. Once you are satisfied that everything fits, cut each piece out. To complete the sleeve, use the leftover of the back shirt to cut out one side of the sleeve and use the top of the shirt sleeve to cut out the other side. We will piece these together later. Since the yoke of the shirt is doubled, I'm going to pin to it the sleeve binding as it will fit perfectly. Then I'm going to place the center front facing on the leftover of the sleeve. Since it's supposed to be on fold, I am adding a half inch seam allowance. Try to keep all your pieces with the grain of the fabric. And you just have to be creative, so if my pattern is stopping you in some way, just alter it to make it work. Next we are going to use the shirt front bottom leftovers to cut out 
two pairs of the back tie straps and and the cuffs will be repurposed for the last two. The only thing I couldn't fit on the shirt was the back facing piece, so I just used some of the cream cotton fabric that I had. Next, I'm piecing together the sleeve. Then I sew it and also serge the edges except for the hem and necklines. I then sew a large stitch along the top and bottom of the sleeves for gathering. Then I gather the sleeve hem to the length of the sleeve hem binding. I then take the sleeve hem binding and fold it in half, then fold the sides in half an inch and apply these right sides together to the sleeve hem, sewing at half inch. Once the underarm seam is sewn, I will flip the hem binding under to finish the hem, but first I want to add the sleeves to the body. The front has a single notch, so you will match these notches together and sew. Do the same for the back, matching the double notches. Then I am going to sew up the side seams and now we come to finishing the sleeve hem by folding back the binding and top stitching about a sixteenth from the edge of the seam, catching the fold on the reverse side. Then to reduce the bulk on the back seams, I remove the button plackets. Yes, I took out all those little buttonhole stitches. It was in a word, fun, so fun. Then lining up the ruler with the notches, I drew the lines onto the fabric. Don't use a pen like I did. I only do that so you can see the lines. Don't do that. Use like chalk or something like that. Match these lines together and sew 5 8 thick casing. Then fold these down and sew along the edge to complete the casing. You want to use a 3 8 or 1 quarter inch elastic. I had to cut mine in half, which I have heard it being done before, but I am skeptical, but I did it anyway. <laughs> you want your elastic to be 4 to 6 inches shorter than your waist and the circumference just above your waist. Then I will feed the elastics in with the safety pin. And just try it on before sewing in the elastic and you can just adjust it. I am now sewing the shoulder seams of the front and back facing. Make sure you sew the center front seams as well. Then I'm prepping the cuffs for the back ties and sewing them along with the other four ties. When sewn, I turn these out with a knitting needle. Now before I attach my facing, I'm going to sandwich my back ties in between the facing and the body. I originally designed it to have the two lower ties at the elastic casing level, but I tried it on and it just didn't really make sense. So I had to seam rip the facing at the bottom and then I decided to place one of the ties at the elasticated area and the other tie a few inches up, level with my bra clasp. The pattern you downloaded has this all sorted out with thicker and shorter ties and notches for correct placement that will look way better. 
I'm going to show you this process after we finish this upcycled blouse. After finishing the facing, I did an understitch, then top stitched half an inch from the edge, stopping at the raglan sleeve seam. I did the same for the front, leaving the facing segment that is attached to the sleeves unsewn. To finish I left the hem raw because I kept adjusting it and it became too short to roll the hem, so I just ran a stitch along the edge to keep fraying under control. For my cream blouse I have my 2 by 7 inch ties which I sewed and flipped. I also ironed open the facing shoulder seams. I then placed the ties at the designated notches and positioned the facing over them, sewing the entire seam at half inch and sewing a quarter inch along the bottom edge. I trimmed the next seam allowance to a quarter inch and snipped along the curve to make it lay flat. Then I understitch the entire facing, which means I sew the seam allowance to the facing very close to the seam. Then I top stitch the facing down, everywhere but the sleeve area. I sewed just the edge of the sleeve area on the facing to keep it neat and clean. Then sew the facing along the back and front. Make sure that when you start at the bottom that you fold the hem under an eighth so we can finish it later with a rolled hem. I then switched to my rolled hem foot and finished the hem. This is the inside of the upcycled blouse. In the pattern, I reduced the seam allowance on the outer edge of the facing so that it wasn't so floppy. And you can see on my cream blouse that this was folded under and top stitched as I just showed you. And you'll find that it looks much more clean and professional. And there you have it, a nice puffy summer blouse. Someone should make this in like a sheer fabric or a satin or lengthen the hem and make it into a dress. There's so many possibilities and I wanna see you guys be creative and make something nice for yourself.
had fun, and you can too. There's a link in the description I provided for you. If you enjoyed this vibe, like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell, cause I hope your day is great.